are. Welcome back, everybody, to The Square, the Circle Music Channel. I'm your host, Aaron Major. Here at The Square, the Circle Music Channel, we like to talk about, you know, collecting records and appreciating music. You know, all things fun under the sun. That's what we do around here. Um, this morning, a calm, very pleasant Western Oregon morning, uh, we're going to do a vinyl community thread video. Um, this is going to be centered around a channel that I just recently came across, and so I'm a new subscriber, and thank you very much, Richard, from the uh, Calvin Wazoo channel. Uh, really cool channel, man. Um, everything that you contribute to the uh, vinyl community is uh, top-notch. We appreciate you. Um, and so, yeah, dude, and it's your birthday, too. Even cooler. So, um, Homeboy wants us to do a uh, video centered around uh, our birthdays as well and uh, all of those fun things associated with it as far as like you know zodiac signs and birthstones and all that cool stuff so um, great idea for a thread video I'm sure it'll make for a really interesting collection of people and 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 you know albums and all kinds of great ideas so um, I'll just get right to it um, I happen to be a uh, Pisces. I was born in March, in mid-March, so that's what um, that's what position in the cosmic dance. That's that's where I stand, I guess you could say. Um, so I'll get right into that one. It's pretty easy to find albums that have that type of like you know imagery and association and iconography or whatever you want to call it, because us as a as a you know human race and assigning you know <laughs> allegory to like the stars and like what it means to us and we're still positioned uh smack dab in the middle of the age of pisces aren't we pretty sure i don't think the age of aquarius technically begins until like 2150 you'll have to um consult your uh <laughs> your local astrologist to uh, be absolutely sure about that but i think we're still in the age of pisces um, I myself am a Pisces, like I said, and it, there's no shortage out there of, uh, like I said, associations to that in the world of music and art and whatever else. So, um, but this happens to be one of my favorites um, by the classic uh, guitarist, songwriter, uh, hippie, progressive rock, whatever type of, you know, it's kind of prog adjacent, this album. In later albums, he kind of went into a real, like, kind of strange, kind of new age kind of place, but um, I really adore this, um, I believe, 1975 issue, his album Fish Rising. Um, really super cool, especially the A side. It's just like one long track. Um, like I said, kind of prog adjacent, but still more just kind of, um, you know, kind of early 70s, kind of blues, hippie rock. Uh, everybody, like, uh, gave themselves like a funny, like Steve Hillage calls himself, uh, Steve Hillfish, you know, this, the whole concept of the album is all centered around the fish. Um, badass album. Everybody check it out. So there's that one. That's my Zodiac sign, uh, here in the Western world. Uh, in the Eastern world, uh, the Chinese have their very own uh, Zodiac, all centered around animals, right? I was born in the year 1980. Um, and in the year 1980, the Chinese assigned the monkey to that year. That's the year of the monkey. Um, and so, yeah, I, I was digging through my collection, and I was just, like, trying to find something really, like, cool to associate with that. And I just, like, I couldn't really find anything, but, you know, there's always a monkeys album. <laughs> so I pulled out a, the Monkey Flips album. A uh, really great uh, collection of some of their classic tunes. Um, I just especially love this picture of them just killing it like Mickey. <laughs> it's so great. Um, this one's done on the Rhino label. It's got the original, you know, inner sleeve of all the really cool stuff that they were releasing on Rhino back in the days. This was like mid-60s, right? Cool greaser, greaser Rhino there. <laughs> Yeah, you're the monkey. That's what I am. So that's a cool album. I'll show that off. Um, 
Next one was tough. Um, birthstone for March is aquamarine. <laughs> so yeah, good fucking luck, everybody, trying to find something somewhere, an album or a picture or something associated with the stone of aquamarine. <laughs> you know, I bet some clever lyricist somewhere, sometime in the rock and roll world has somehow injected, <laughs> you know, the word or the term uh, aquamarine into something. But um, I thought I would just try to like, I was digging through some of my collection and I was like, well, aquamarine is such a beautiful color. The stone itself actually is more of like an actual like like pale pale blue color wherein like if you talk to artists or you look at the color wheel or whatever aquamarine technically on the color wheel is like more of a greenish hue smack dab in between like cyan and like actually like a pale green color anyway blar de blar um i just picked out a couple albums that just i love the color scheme and the art and everything about it um, and these shades of aquamarine uh, on the cover art. This is an album that I talked about. It um, was on my top 10 albums of the year uh, last year in 2021. Uh, this is a group off of uh, the label Relapse Records. They're called Genghis Tron, album called Dream Weapon. Uh, magnificent, magnificent album. Uh, anyone that likes stuff that's, you know, heavier edge, but not, not kind of like, you know, dirty metal, kind of like real kind of like fine-tuned, refined metal sound, but mixed with kind of like more of like a math rock and also lots of like elements of synth, uh, synth wave, kind of dark synth stuff um, with that real cool, like kind of industrial sound of the 90s. Uh, fucking great band, but I especially love this artistic uh, expression and the color scheme, which is aquamarine. It's beautiful, kind of like sunken architecture theme throughout. Um, but yeah, beautiful shades of green, blue. Love it. And again, another one. Uh, it's one of my favorite albums, one of my favorite uh, cover designs, and it has that beautiful shade of green to blue. The Tangerine Dream uh, album Rubicon uh, from what, like 1978? Something like that. Sorry, 75. Um, yeah, love that art and especially that color, that aquamarine color. So there's that. This last one, uh, was a bummer for me. <laughs> I was researching online and like nobody has, no famous musicians have my, the same birthday as me. Um, which was kind of a huge bummer. <laughs> I was hoping to pull out some really cool shit and, you know, find out that some of my favorite artists had the same birthday as me, but no, nobody. I don't have any Neil Sedaka in my collection. <laughs> that was the closest I could get. Me and uh, Neil Sedaka share a birthday, and Britney Spears, <laughs> we share a birthday too. And I sure as shit don't have any Britney Spears in my fucking collection, so. Um, yeah, bummer, guys. I had to just, like, pick out a couple of random artists that I have in my collection that were close. Uh, one from like March 12th, which is a day prior, and then two from like March 14th, a day later. So um, yeah, I'll just show those. In March 12th, um, Johann Strauss was born uh, sometime in the early 19th century. I don't remember exactly, but like 1805 or some shit he was born. Um, I think he was Swiss, wasn't he? Anyway, Johann Strauss, you know, most notorious for his um, composition, uh, The Blue Danube. Yeah, which uh, comprises a huge majority of the, the beginning of this film, uh, at least probably a 12 to 15 minute stretch of the film uh, going off uh, the, the Blue Danube. But this is my favorite film of all time, of course, 2001 Space Odyssey. Um, and that song will, you know, forever be associated with this film. But yeah, Johann Strauss was born March 12th. Pretty close to me. Uh, another one of my favorite artists, uh, guru of the um, jazz fusion world in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, keyboardist, percussionist extraordinaire, uh, Japanese man Stomo Yamashita was born March 14th. I don't remember exactly what year, sometime in the 40s, I think. But yeah, Stomo Yamashita, really fantastic. And this uh, album titled Go with like Steve Winwood, who else again? Oh yeah, Mike, Michael Shreve, really excellent, you know, progressive jazz fusion stuff 
um, adore this album. Just recently found this again. I, I haven't had it in my collection for a few years and picked this up at a junk store for really cheap. So yeah, Stoma Yamashita was, uh, shares a pretty close birthday to me. And uh, last one I got for you guys, a uh, famed album producer who's had his magic touch on just like literally hundreds of some of the greatest albums in modern history. Uh, albums like The Joshua Tree by U2, um, albums by other types of uh, more kind of like underrated uh, bands like the band Fish. He produced a couple of their albums in the mid-90s, and also some of this stuff in the mid-90s, this um, group Dave Matthews Band, this album Under the Table and Dreaming, which was a huge smash success in 1994, produced by none other than Steve Lillywhite. Yes, Steve Lillywhite, like I said, has produced hundreds and hundreds of records that you may not even be aware of, and you're like, wow, that album sounds so fucking fantastic. You know, chances are, Steve Lily White had his paws on the board, you know, mixing that shit down. So this one, yeah, sounds just absolutely incredible. Like I said, as well as many, many, many other albums. So Steve Lily White, born March 14th, sometime in the 50s, I'm sure, 40s or 50s. So uh, there it is. Those are my selections that are, um, you know, hitched to my birthday. Um, happy birthday to you, Richard, from the... Calvin Wazoo channel. Uh, again, congratulations on breaking through that monumental marker of a thousand subscribers. And uh, so, yeah, I hope everybody in the vinyl community, I hope you all have a uh, beautiful, peaceful Sunday here. And um, that's all I got for you. Maybe I'll see you later. Peace out from the Square to Circle Music Channel. Goodbye.